Artists first used flexible metal containers for their paints back in 1841. Nowadays, we use them for a range of gooey things like toothpaste, glue, and skin cream. The tube's design lets us squeeze out most of the product and yet still read that important fine print on the twisted package. These packaging tubes are made of aluminum because it's affordable, lightweight, and malleable. This company makes each tube from an aluminum slug about the size of a coin. A worker dumps a batch of slugs in a container, then adds a lubricating powder called zinc stearate. The container spins, causing the powder to coat the slugs evenly and prep the metal for stretching later on. The slugs then spin around in another container which orients them horizontally so they'll fit through a channel at the bottom. The channel feeds the slugs into a forming press. In a process called impact extrusion, each slug moves onto a die which gives it the exterior shape of a tube, including the neck. At the same time, a mandrel forms the interior. This process hardens the metal, something they'll correct later on by heating it. The machine applies 200 tons of pressure to as many as 150 slugs per minute. They can be as narrow as one centimeter and as long as 22 centimeters. This machine uses compressed air to align the tubes for the next step. A trimming machine cuts threads into the necks by passing each one between two synchronized rollers. Stationary blades trim the top of the neck, making the surface smooth and safe to handle. The neck on most models remains sealed until the consumer pierces it. Another company eventually seals the tube by rolling up the other end after they've inserted their product. After heating them to soften the metal, the tubes move through another machine. Here, nozzles spray the insides with two coats of epoxy lacquer. This creates a protective barrier between the aluminum and the eventual contents. Rollers apply a coat of polyester enamel paint which is flexible when dry and resistant to most solvents and sun damage. Grippers place the tubes on long pins which move them through an oven for seven minutes so the paint can dry. From there, it's off to the printing machine. Each tube makes one complete rotation against a printing plate. The plate applies a colored image and information that describes the tube's contents. Then they go back in the oven to dry the ink. The printing's legible even when twisted because the polyester ink remains flexible. Another machine applies a kilo of torque to screw on the plastic caps. Most of the caps have pointy tops used to pierce the sealed neck of the tube. They use flat caps to close off tubes with open necks. On the next machine, nozzles spray on a strip of latex sealant inside the open end of the tube. The latex is like a gasket. After the product is inserted, it seals the tube when they fold the end over. After a machine packs boxes with an average of 300 tubes each, a worker inspects the inside of every tube. A bright spotlight reveals any chip in the paint that makes the packaging deficient. About one in every 500 tubes is flawed. A sheet of sticky paper over the open ends of the tubes keeps them from twisting during shipping. And a label on the box provides tracking information and a way to show if someone has tampered with it en route. Empty. Each tube sells for about 12 cents each. Not bad for something designed to be your main squeeze.